In this open automation software presentation, we'll demonstrate the universal driver interface hosted in an Android application. We'll see how the driver is automatically setting up tags and driver interface from the data defined by the developer of the universal driver interface. If we take a look at the technical aspects of how open automation software is typically run, it is hosted on a Windows service and is it talking to industrial controllers like Allen Bradley, Siemens, Modbus, and sending data to cloud systems like Azure, AWS, and also interfacing to uh, databases, uh, both read and write capabilities of that, all the other functionality that you become familiar with op open automation software. With the universal driver interface, we've extended the interface capabilities to not only the local operating system where the service is running, but also remote devices on platform applications. So we can run on Linux, Mac, Android, iOS, and even Raspberry Pi. The developer will define the data set that will be incorporated into the open automation software platform. Let's dive right in to see a live example of that. The first thing we want to do is make sure the OES services are installed. So after installing the software, the services uh, manager will come up and you'll want to start that. If you restart the operating system, these services automatically start. That is where the data is going to be hosted from. So that's where the final data will be delivered to or we'll be sending data from it out to the driver interface as well. It's bi-directional. The next step, let's take a look at under the program group open automation software, we'll start the configure UDI application. This is the new configure application for tags and driver interfaces that the user can set up its own data set. So if we look right now under both drivers and tags, we really don't have anything defined there. There we see in the driver interface, we could define a Modbus device uh, or Allen Bradley controllers. Under tags, we have no tags defined there. So let's go right into hosting the driver interface in an Android device. So from Visual Studio, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select File, New Project, and I'm going to select under Visual Studio, uh, C Sharp, I'm going to select Cross-Platform Project. If you don't see that, you will want to install the cross-platform uh, uh, project for Xamarin Forms, and then you'll have this application type. You can see other types of uh, applications that you can run either .NET Core, .NET Standard, and we also even support .NET Framework, uh, older .NET Framework 4 and 4.5 applications. So we'll select a blank project. The first thing we want to do is to add a project reference to the driver. What we'll do is we'll use one of the existing drivers that's already installed with open automation software. If we look in the installation directory of open automation software and then under opcsystems.net, we'll see a universal driver subdirectory. There we see some example driver code for both the framework 4.0 and 4.5 target and then the cross-platform uh, projects under the standard directory. So if we look under the driver subdirectory, under C Sharp or Visual Basic, we're looking in the release directory and we see we already have a standard 2.0 uh, assembly created as well as a o OES driver interface. It's important to include either the OES driver interface assembly or the OES driver interface framework for, for the older uh, targets uh, to basically include the driver support back to the OES service. And then the example driver, that's your assembly that you're creating with the example code. So we'll add this. And again, we've jumped ahead by basically just deploying the example code. And in a moment, we'll dive back into the driver code itself. In the app project, what I'm going to do is expand the app.xaml code, and I'll see a code behind of app.xaml.csharp, CS. So let's go ahead and grab uh, an example from one of the other hosting projects. It's very simple to follow. We just need a constructor of the driver interface itself, and it's off and running. So let me just open up a Windows service here, example.
I'll look under the standard subdirectory under hosting app. I'll use Windows Service and C Sharp. And let's look at this example hosting app to see how it's doing it. And right here we have a constructor for default driver and we have some variables. These are just constants that we've set up and that just makes it easy to organize the data. But basically those are all used in this constructor. So let's copy those variables, paste that into our code here. We're going to change those in a second and let's put in our constructor. Really easy to do. There we go. And we can compile and run that, but let me stop to just check this out. We have the IP address of the hosting node. It wouldn't actually work until I set this guy to 10.0.2.2. That is the IP address uh, when we're running an Android emulator of the hosting service. Now in the real world, you're gonna actually point that to a registered domain name or an I fixed IP address uh, where the OES service is running. Now, if your OES service does not have a fixed IP address, you can use the live data cloud feature, which is our next variable. So you'd point that to a live data cloud node. It's running over port 58727 by default. That is adjustable. And the machine name, this is very important that this be unique for each instance that the driver is uh, running. Now in this case, we're just gonna run one instance of it. So I'm just gonna set it to something Lou to say my Android device, okay? So pay attention to that machine name. It's gonna show up in uh, some other places when we run this app here. Okay, so we're now ready to debug the app. So what we wanna do is select the Android uh, application and let's go ahead and debug that one. Here we have our Android emulator running, running our example uh, application. Now let's go back to that configure application and let's take a look what's happening there. So the Android application has told the service it wants to automatically create a set of tags and it has the uh, group uh, example driver, another group under that called my Android device. That came from the machine name. We'll see that in the code. And then we have three variables, three tag variables that have been added. And we can see that they are now communicating to the Android device itself. So we can go to sign, ramp, random. And notice the user can adjust any of the parameters. Now, there are some new properties that were automatically added to the tag configuration. One being the simulation type that came from the driver itself. So we'll see that you can define your own driver code to define variable types in OAS that automatically show up. You can even define your own help that's included. So if we click on the help button, whatever information to the developer that you want to present to them is shown there. And here we have another enumeration type of sim type. So these are two property types that are added into the OAS configuration of now when you select this new type called UDI example driver that show up. So your other drivers that you create, they will all show up here under the data sources of OAS and be available. I can even make changes here further. Let's say from the sign, I wanna change the uh, polling rate. I've now told the Android emulator, the instance running there at the Android emulator that I want to communicate now at a 10th of a second. Let's take a look at where these properties of each of the driver interface and the tag properties are coming from in the driver configuration in the actual driver example code itself. The universal driver interface code base is installed with the open automation software installation. So if you open Visual Studio and open a project, go into the directory of open automation software installation directory and select universal drivers and there you'll see framework for and standard for the cross-platform applications you'll select the standard for 4.0 and 4.5 you would have select the framework for so let's look under the driver subdirectory of the standard folder and there we see both a c sharp and visual basic code example and let's look at the example driver and c sharp
And if we go to the top of the driver interface code, we we'll see that you can define your own enumeration types. Here we have um, selected driver type, SIM types. You go ahead and feel free to make any enumeration type that you like or any kind of instance variables that you'd like. We do need to relieve this one variable, which is the OES driver interface. That's the instance of the communications back to the central OES service. And then you do need to define the variable driver name. That is the unique driver name for your communication driver. Doesn't matter how many times it's been deployed, this is a unique name to define in the OES configuration. Let's jump back to the configure application. Let's see where that is. So in the tag, if we use the data source, that name shows up in the UDI section of the driver data sources. So your name will automatically show up as one of the available data sources of a tag. Also, under the driver configuration, when we look at the driver that was automatically added here, we see that the driver type was set to UDI example driver, that name that you have defined there. So whatever name you use will show up here in this configuration. Then the machine name is something that will be unique for every instance of the driver that you deploy. So that is where that name does need to be unique for every, every time the uh, driver is instanced. And it doesn't matter if you deploy it multiple times on the same computer or other remote different devices. Then the driver section is where you would define what is the properties that you want the user to be able to adjust to control for your interface. So they can do that here back under configure drivers. They would, you are basically providing them a list of different property types that you want them to be able to adjust to. Okay. So here we've defined uh, a name here, a description name called driver type. And then we've provided some optional help in here. And then what type of parameter that is. Here it's an enumeration type and the default value of that property. And it is a uh, manual type. Now there's one other additional uh, argument to creating a property. And that is uh, if the property can be visible or not. And that can be controlled based upon other variables of the uh, configuration. So if the user selects, say, driver type zero, then this property called driver type zero integer will become visible. And if they select driver type one, this next property would be uh, visible. And then if the user selects one or two, then the driver type one or and two integer uh, is available. Okay, so what you do is create a basically a list of different driver properties. That's a type of class property. So you make a list of class properties and return that. And that becomes the default configuration type for making a driver interface. So here, if I select driver type zero, you see that property driver type zero shows up as well as if I click on the question mark to the right of driver type, that help that we had to find in the driver shows up here for the user. Also, if you do a CSV import and export, those properties then show up in that CSV and import and export with the values that, are, that the user defines here. But remember in this example, this driver configuration was automatically created when the driver first started up. Then if we jump back, uh, we see that method called get driver interface to add. That's where you would define what are the default values for when creating a new driver interface automatically. It is an optional thing to support. So if you don't want to automatically begin communications, you can leave that uh, just to return uh, null. But if you do want to automatically add a, a configuration with default values, here's where you can do that. Again, you just fill in a list of class properties and return that list 
to that to that uh, function call. The connect method will be called from OAS any time that communications is to begin. That's when the OAS is in runtime or has established communicating to the driver instance. So this is where you'd be passed back your parameters. Here we've just given you some examples based upon the types that uh, are from the example already, but you can see you can pass back strings, uh, integers, enumerations, whatever. This is specific. So whatever the user defines here under the driver configuration, that's what the values are that's going to be passed to that function call. And then disconnect is called anytime OAS stops runtime or it basically shuts down. So if the service is stopped uh, or if the driver interface is deleted from the configuration, this method would be called. Then we have the tag section. We use the same exact principle of creating a list of tag properties of default um, types that you want supported. So here we have a new type called simulation type and dynamic simulation type. Those are two new properties. Those would show up under the tags. So here, if I go look at the tags, anytime the data source is set to UDI example driver, that's that driver name, then these two new properties will show up. If, so these two new properties are enum both enumeration types in that code example. So one is dynamic and one is static. And see, when I change it to static, you can see that other parameter becomes invisible. So let's go back to the code and see how that happens. So here, when I've defined this property, dynamic sim type, I've included this optional last parameter call for the visibility. And when the sim type is set to dynamic, it will be visible. Otherwise, it will be invisible. And their types are, of course, these enumeration types, sim types, and dynamic sim types. And these are the default values if a new driver interface is created. Then further down in the code, we have the get tags to add function call. And that's optional to support if you want to automatically ta create tags when the driver is first communicating with the service. The return uh, is going to be a list of lists. So that what you're going to do is for each tag, you will have a list of properties. And then for however many tags you want to do is you add that to the entire list of all of those. Here we were just using a string array of three strings, ramp, random, and sign. Here we have a simple iteration through the strings to dynamically create the tags. And the tag names need to be uh, specify. That's one thing that you do have to specify in this function call is at least the tag name that's going to be created or set. And this one we're just dynamically creating it based upon the driver name and machine name that we have. And then we have this string which is one of these uh, strings that we've defined in this array. So that's where those tag names come from. Let's go back and look at that. So we have example driver, my Android device that came from the machine name and then we have the tag itself. Further down we have the next method that is called from OAS data engine called add tags and that is going to be called when an item is to be continuously monitored. So you will be passed back parameters, all the parameters you, you have defined for a tag will be passed back to you along with two uh, additional parameters, one for tag name and one for polling rate. And that will help you define uh, how fast or frequently you need to obtain the data for OAS. And so here the polling rate, this is that polling rate we were talking about. So if I change that to say one second, then that slows, that tells the uh, on the add tags method, what the polling rate it was interested in, and that's what uh, what the return is. So that's where that call is itself. Optionally, you can also include and support sending and updating system errors. 
So if there's a trouble in communications or some kind of exception in the routine, you may want to post a system error back to OAS. So the first argument is true if you want to make it active. Set that argument to false if you want to clear a system error. The second property is the category. Third is the category number. That is a unique identifier for each category element that you want to support in the system errors. And then finally, the message itself that you want to post. Remove tags is a method that's called anytime that continuous communication should stop on uh, the device. So basically, we're just passing in the tag names that you would remove. And this simple code example, we're just removing this from this hash table, which is a holder of uh, values. And then uh, we have the sync read uh, method that's called. This is optional for, to support. If you want to support the device read property in the OAS configuration to be able to trigger a read at a specific time based upon an event and not continuously pull, then this is the method that is called when that trigger element occurs in, for that specific tag. So with it unchecked, you see that we have the specific polling rate that we want to do. And with it checked, um, we, we, wouldn't have a, we wouldn't have a dynamic polling. So that's what the sync read tag function is for. And then we have the write tags function. That is called any time that a tag is written. So you have the tag IDs that are passed to you along with the values and a list of properties. It's important to have that list of properties back to you so that you know what this tag information is defined and how you're going to write to your application or device. So again, you just call the get property value function on the driver interface of your property type and the value will be returned to you. And then at the, at the end of the uh, example driver code is just some demo driver code. This is completely up to you, but this example has a simple timer doing some simulation. And the key to that you really need to pay attention to is the async read callback. So what you would do is you would go obtain the values from your device or application, then you'd build up an array of class tag values that is a particular type. And here's an example of creating a new, new one of particular value. And what you have is you pass back the tag ID, which is the tag name, your value, a timestamp, and then quality is true if it's good, false if it's bad. And so then just call this async read uh, callback function on the OAS driver interface and the values will be sent back to the OES service. Now, if you lose communications and you want to support uh, stored forward functionality, that goes back here in the hosting application or basically in the constructor of the example itself. So if we look back in the driver code, um, way back at the top of when it's constructed, We are passing in a store and forward functionality to this constructor on the driver interface itself. So with that fault, it's just normal where if you lose communications to the service, nothing is buffered. But if that's set to true, then when communications is lost to the service, data can be buffered and cached right on the device so that when communications is reestablished, it would uh, send all of those values that were buffered uh, over that time period. The username and password, that is important if the OES service is security restricted on not being able to set a tag unless a user is logged in. So that would be the username and password that would have the proper authentication rights to be able to set a tag uh, parameter and also set a driver interface parameter. So that's how you can basically make the driver talk to the service if it's security restricted. Well, this completes our fast code walkthrough and our example presentation of the driver interface hosted in a Android application. Um, if you have any other questions about the OES driver, if you want to try it for yourself, 
visit the website openautomationsoftware.com and under the support pull down you'll see the downloads link where you can fill in your contact information to request a download link you do want to be running version 11 dot zero dot one seven uh, or greater in order to support the universal driver interface uh, as functionality to this level and under the knowledge base we looked at that earlier you will find information on how to define your own driver interface further and if we look under data sources universal driver interface there you'll see step-by-step walkthrough uh, on to create your own driver interface itself. If you have any other questions, please send us an email to support at oasiot.com or contact us directly on a phone or fill out the contact us request form. And we'd be happy to set up a web conference to assist you with any of your requirements and also give you a, demonst a live demonstration of the universal driver interface and all of its further capabilities.